Hey everyone, it's Savitha Blade here, aka Sage Valentine, and you're watching the Sage Valentine Network here on YouTube. Um, this is my review of The Walking Dead Season 4, Episode 11, entitled Claim. The episode opens with like three or four walkers reaching up towards a sign that says Crook Road on it with a balloon that's stuck or something. A tank rolls by, you see a hand, and his hand is writing something. I think it's either coordinates or street numbers, street signs, I guess. Um, all of a sudden, I guess, um, the truck kind of slows down a little bit and you see there's a walker crush between like the a fellow truck that's on the side of the road and it's like, it's crushed between the bed and the actual truck head part, I guess. Um, the walk, Tara, basically, the, the truck all of a sudden stops, Tara jumps out, she's about to fire her rifle because as the truck pulls past the zombies reaching for the balloon, they decide to walk on over and they, um, basically come and are trying to get into the truck and Tara's about to bring out her gun when Abraham pops out and Abraham has this crowbar and he stabs all the walkers in the head. And, like, well, two of the walkers, and the funny part is when he sees this third one, and she's, like, really messed up, and he said, oh, honey, he said, you're, you, he said, look at you, you're, you're just a damn mess, <laughs> and she was a mess, and it took him a while to, you know, kill her with the crowbar, and he ends up having to, like, use the butt of Tara's rifle just to kill him, because the zombie didn't want to go, and one of the zombies that he thought he killed, he had to, like, slam it in the head <laughs> with the, um, the rifle, <laughs> And then he just smiles, and Tara's kind of freaked out, like, you're smiling. And she's like, it's pretty rare. And he said, well, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. And I guess that's how the episode begins. Um, Carl's sitting with Michonne at breakfast, and I think it's really cute. They're making small talk, mostly about Michonne's little white top. And it's like a man's um, button-down, long sleeve shirt. And Michonne has made it her own, because her shirt is, like, all messed up, I guess. And she's trying to clean it. And what happens is that... They start joking about little things, and all of a sudden, Carl mentions Judith. Then he realizes what he said, and he, like, rushes out of the room. I think it was something about Michelle mentioning soy milk, and he was talking about this boy in his class and how the boy had soy milk, and he felt nauseous after tasting this milk, and how um, he would rather have powdered milk or Judith's um, formula, and I guess that kind of got him. It's kind of sad. Michonne, and when he runs away, Michonne walks into the kitchen, and she sees Rick in there. I think Rick's cooking. And he just, he still looks messed up, but at least he can stand up this time. He's not laying down and moaning and groaning like he can stand and he's okay. It's a pretty big Raccoon moment. Yeah, guys, you guys got it this week. Um, he still looks like hell, but he thanks Michonne for, you know, making Carl laugh, because Carl has... Carl hasn't really laughed in the recent episodes, I guess, since Lori died, so it's really sweet. And Rick says, you know what, he needs you, which I translate into, I need you, but I'm not going to say it yet because the writers don't want me to say it yet. But I saw some type of thing going on between him and Michonne, and it was really cute. I thought it was adorable. Michonne is basically wondering, is this house their home? And Rick says, for now. He tells him to go on a supply run, her and um, Carl. But he decides he wants to go in there, and Michonne's like, listen, you're not going. And I was like, I love this whole black woman take charge thing. It's, it's awesome. She's like, you're not going. She's like, look at you. you. You're sick. She's like, no. So he just walks, to, like, he's, like, sitting in the kitchen. He's walking, watching her walk away, and it's, like, a huge raccoon moment. And I'm just like, raccoon is just, like, owning this season half right now. Like, they've got it. I know they are happy and tweeting and tumbling and everything else just their happiness and to me personally Carl Rick and Michelle make a, the cutest little family even in the comic book like you even though Michonne and Rick never really like had sex or anything or even kissed um you could tell there was like an exchange with them um Carl's still sad but he really doesn't want to talk about it Michonne tries to make small talk um and it's pretty cute because she's, like, trying to be the mother figure since Lori died. And she shoots some string cheese into her mouth because she tried to get Carl to do it and she didn't. So she's, like, sitting there with all this cheese in her mouth. It's dripping out and I was cracking up. 
Carl didn't want to see it, so she kind of wipes the cheese off her mouth. Um, Rick is in the house. He sees a pocket watch that's ticking, ticking, ticking. I think this is a woman's bedroom he's in, just by the size of the watch. I'm not trying to be, like, sexist or anything, but just the size of the watch looks like a woman's watch. Um, he bandages himself up, because I told you, like I said, in a, episode 9's video, his, ri his ribs are, like, screwed up after the governor just beat the hell out of him. I think it's really cute that Michonne and Carl are really close. I really, really like it. I do. I just find their, their relationship to be very cute. Um, they come upon a house, and Michonne mentioned something about having a three-year-old son who loved her sense of humor. And they go looking through the house, and Carl inquires about her life. Michonne basically tells him, listen, if we, by each, depending upon each room, or should I, I'm messing this all up, for every room they go into, she'll answer one question at a time. Rick is sleeping, they jump back, and he hears this, these footsteps and this scream of pain. But I guess he thinks he's dreaming at first, and he opens his eyes. All of a sudden, he hears people, some, like footsteps coming up the steps, and he goes under the bed, and he's hiding under the bed, and this man is walking in. I think he's African-American, on a side note, just by his voice. And he has, like, a Creole Cajun-type voice. Like, his, he, he just sounds, like, really Southern. And I just, for some reason, I knew he was black. I, I, whole nother video. Um. Anyway, the guy is in a machine gun. Like, he has a machine gun. He's in the room. I'm saying, who the hell are these people? Rick is hiding under the bed, and I'm just like, where the hell are your cell phones? And I'm remembering this is the zombie apocalypse. They don't have cell phones anymore. <laughs> Man, we depend on these things way too much. Um, He walks into the bed. He walks into the bedroom, and Rick sees blood on the guy's boots, and he's, like, trying to freak out. I think before Rick really stayed under there, he grabbed, like, the pocket watch, and he had a bottle of water, and he grabbed the water in the book to look like he hadn't been in the room. Michonne and Rick, I think Michonne and Carl are still in that little house that they were looking into for um um supplies because they went to one house they got all their supplies they went to this other house and they were just looking for things. Apparently, Michonne's son's name was Andre Anthony, and Michonne sees this gorgeous paintings, beautiful paintings on the wall. It's like I think it's a lion or something. I think the kids might have painted. It's like some child painted it. She's looking at the art and mentions something about no one was good enough for me. I think she's talking about, like, because Carl asked her that she had more than one child, and she says just one was fine with me. Carl brings the painting over to Michonne, and we find out that her son died after everything began, and she never told anyone except for Carl. That's why I love their relationship. It's a cute little relationship, and they're bonding. Carl tells her, your secret is safe with me. Michonne uncovers the painting to see that it's like a picture of a woman as covered in like black and red like lines on it. And I was like, this is spooky. It's like a bad sign. And um, they go. she goes into a little bathroom. Looks like a kid's bathroom. And then she walks through there, turns a knob. And like, for some reason in the bathroom, there's like fog on the mirror. Which I noticed, which could mean that either someone had, someone was in there at one time and took a shower. I'm not even sure, but it's just a bad sign. She sees all the kids' toys and dollhouses, and it's a cute room. Then she goes to this pink door, and this is where she finds the gory mess. Dead bodies laying in little children's beds, and apparently that must be the mother, the father, two daughters. And then there's another girl or a woman, it's like something, sitting in the chair and her head, like we don't, we see her face kind of, but we see the back of her head and like the back of her head is blown out. So we're kind of like, okay. Um, I'm trying to figure out, did she kill herself or did she just run and kill them? God only knows. And blood's like splattered on the wall. So they made sure you know she blew, somebody blew her head open or she blew her head open. Head, head. She blew a hole in her head, basically. She closes the door, and she lies to Carl, basically telling him everything's okay. With everything Carl's seen, I'm kind of glad she did do that, because, honestly, Carl didn't need to know anything else. And like I said, 
Carl is still upset about Judith, and he says, well, maybe Judith and, and um, Andre are somewhere playing together. It's, like I said, a mother-son relationship. Rick tries to slip out from under the bed. This Another man walks in, wakes up the sleeping man in the bed, says that he wants the bed. They fight. They tussle. All of a sudden, they're on the floor, and that's when I found out that the guy, that, the original guy that was on the bed was black. It was, like, really light eyes. And he gets choked by the other guy and he's like no he sees rick and like you're just sitting there waiting like don't see rick don't see rick he sees rick and he's like telling the guy stop 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 and then, like i i call it my old crap moment and the guy is basically strangled before he can say like i see rick and the other guy that's in the room he just says dead now jack off mind you the second dude is wearing these badass doc martin boots that i love wow I <laughs> said they were so awesome. Like, I was looking at the souls. I'm like, those are Doc Martens. Those are Doc Martens. Newsflash, the second guy's not dead. He's just knocked the hell out. So the old crap moment became the old shh moment. Yeah. Glenn wakes up, finds himself in the back of Abraham's truck. He starts freaking out because Tara brings in the... Tara's basically the angel of death or the bringer of bad news because she has to tell Glenn that not only did they pass the bus... But they didn't find anybody in this bus. They said, like, all the people, I guess, were dead or zombies. And Glenn's freaking out, banging against the um, window. Let me out! Let me out! Abraham tries to... Abraham stops the truck. He gets out. Dr. Eugene Porter gets out. Rosita Espinosa, his girlfriend, gets out. And, um... I apologize last week because I called her Perez. I'm sorry. It's, all these characters are melding in my head. Um... Abraham tries to stop him. We need more people, the better. We got to get to Washington because Dr. Porter knows what started this. And Glenn tries to ask him. He says, oh, it's classified. Abraham tells him that the fate of the thing depends, race depends on Glenn's survival. I think it's cool that uh, Eugene has that mullet that he has in the cartoon and the um, comic book. is pretty awesome. We find out Eugene is a scientist. Like I said, he knows what started this mess. Glenn asks what happened. Like I said, classified. They're talking to... DC. They were talking, I guess, on walkie talkies to DC when everything went dark. That's why they were like on their way to DC. They just need his help. Glenn refuses and starts walking. Tara follows him along with Abraham and Rosita. Abraham believes there are no survivors. He makes a mistake. I think he was trying to, you know, bring bring Glenn back to reality, but. It was the wrong time. And I don't know what it is with Glenn and these military people. First, he's fighting Merle, who was an ex-Marine, Army Marine. Some One thing says Army, one thing says Marine. It, Merle was basically ex-military, even though he was kicked out. Now, you got Abraham, who was ex-military, and he tells him, get back on the truck. He said, and do something with your life. Didn't Glenn drop his stuff, start, start punching him, and they're fighting, and they're punching back and forth. Pow, pow, pow. Well... A walker comes out of the grass or out of the trees and just starts walking err, towards him. Didn't this Eugene Porter, Lord in heaven, this scene, I was just like, what is going, I'm like, what is wrong with you? I said, never let a crazy with a gun. This guy starts shooting, like he starts trying to unlock or load the gun. Then some walkers think they're the children of the corn and they start coming out of the corn because apparently they stop near a cornfield and they start coming out the corn. This fool opens fire and just shoots and he ends up shooting in a circle, not only shooting the zombie, the walkers and kind of missing them because you didn't hit their heads. This guy shoots in the circle, ends up shooting up the truck. <sighs> and Eugene versus seven zombies and he can't even shoot. Like, who left him with that gun? Like, Abraham should have taken his gun, wasted all the bullets. Not only did he draw attention from the zombies. Hello, they're attracted to gunfire and sound, as I've said in other videos. Sound. Ooh, lunch. And of course, because Eugene and Glenn, now the fuel is leaking out of the truck. Nice going, guys. Good idea. I keep saying let the bodies hit the floor as they're like, as uh, Abraham and um, Abraham and Tara and Glenn and Rosita and and uh, everyone just gets together. They just start shooting up the zombies and I'm like, let the bodies hit the floor. I'm like, that song is just like in my head all the time. <laughs> Whenever somebody's shooting in a movie, I keep thinking of that song. Rest in peace to Dave, though. Um, 
Rick is still under the bed. He's trying to sneak out. And I'm saying, what are you doing? I'm like, if you get caught, I'll be so mad. Like, stay there for a minute. Rick sees a man coming upstairs, and he has a ball. And he, Rick is hiding in the children's room. He finds someone downstairs found a woman's shirt, and someone came upstairs, and it was like a close call. However, Rick ends up going in the bathroom and sees this man, and he basically has to strangle this man to death. And this man just was reaching, trying to get these scissors. Couldn't get the scissors. Poor baby. Rick ends up choking him to death. He has the man's gun sneaks out of the house. He's on, like, the slanted roof. He somehow slips down without making a sound. Gotta love Hollywood and television, because if that was a real person, would have been like, boom, and everyone would have been outside. Um, He escapes with the gun. He's in the backyard. He, like, he's going around the side of the house near the front porch, and the guy with the ball comes out. He's, like, bouncing that ball. I'm like, you and this tennis ball are, like, driving me crazy. Abraham starts telling war stories. As he's trying to fix the truck, Rosita finds a picture of Maggie that he that Glenn dropped, and Glenn didn't even say thank you; he just took it. Glenn is basically dead set on finding Maggie, and Eugene, Abraham, and Rosita are dead set of making it to Washington, but. Rosita's like, screw this, when Tara and Glenn start walking off because they're tired of everything. Because Glenn just basically tells them when the truck is messed up, good luck on going to Washington. Rosita follows because she's like, I'm not letting him go out of here with what he's going through. Abraham follows, and so does Eugene Porter. And Eugene agrees, like, he was like, we can still make it to D.C. if we keep on walking. He said, we can, um, he's like, trust me, I'm smart on you, meaning, like, they can keep walking, they'll find them in another car, and they can make it down there, it's fine by that. Um, what unearths me about Eugene is that Eugene, for whatever reason, smiles as they're walking. So I'm wondering, did he do this on purpose? Possibly. To sabotage them, and what other craziness is he gonna do next? There's a man that comes outside, but he's unrecognized. He's recognizable, but I can't think of his name. And by the time I get to the next, um, probably the next video, I'll probably get this guy's name because he just popped up. But he's been in a whole bunch of different shows, and he's just recognizable to me. Rick sees Michonne and Carl walking towards the house. Um, all of a sudden, somehow a walker got into the house or something, and he's distracting the dude outside. I'm thinking this guy is Nagin. But they never really mentioned his name. That is the first name that came to mind. So it's it's like it's caught in my head, and I'm just like, okay, well, who is this guy? Because they they had some of the characters had names, and I'm wondering, is this that same guy? Like he just screamed Nagin to me, but then I didn't see Lucille the bat. So if you don't know who Lucille is or Nagin is, definitely read the comic books or go on the uh, Walking Dead wiki page, and it'll definitely tell you who that is. Um, because of the Walker going in the house, Rick basically runs to Michonne and Carl and tells him, "Go, go, go." Okay. Glenn, Tara, Rosita, Eugene, and Abraham are walking. Abraham says, gotta hand it to him. He's a persistent son of a bitch. He understands why Tara is following Glenn, but saving the world is more important. He was like, even if his his wife is alive, how long will happily ever after last? Tara, in question, Tara questions why Abraham wants to go to Washington in the first place. She basically says something like, I understand why Eugene wants to go because Eugene knows what started this mess. I know why Rosita wants to go because Rosita loves you. But why do you want to go? She was like, and don't lie to me. Some type of variation she mentions with that. Um, like I said, Mick, Michonne, Carl, and Rick, again, they're walking because Rick, once, they, once that dude ran inside with the zombie, Rick took off running and... and Um, Michonne, Carl, and Rick make it to those train tracks that Tyrese and the gang basically made it to last episode. And they see this banner, and they're reading it, and Michonne says, are you sure you want to do this? And Rick says, let's just go and see how we're going to go, and they all start walking up. This banner basically says, sanctuary for all, community for all those who arrive, survive. I read the comic book, so I kind of know where this is going. I'm not going to give you a spoiler, but, um... 
there's a dark de there's a man coming and he's going to make the governor literally as I've been saying before look like Mr. Rogers and the governor had his own brand of crazy as it is so I'm just gonna leave you guys at that hopefully by um, next episode or before the season ends our gang will get together and we will finally be able to see entirely what the hell this so-called sanctuary is and I guess we're gonna find out who those men were in Rick's room either way this episode was kind of freaky and scary even for me and I've watched all seasons I've never thought this is scary Anywho, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you ever want to tweet me, I'm at Sage Valentine on Twitter.com. Check out my blogs. Um, the Truth is on WordPress, Rock and Roll Sister on Blogspot or Blogger.com. And um, just, guys, have a happy Monday and stay tuned for my review of the following. Thanks, guys. Peace.